Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to talk about HP ILO 5 and what it means to have the advanced license versus the standard license, specifically in the web management interface. So you can see that we have two servers. We set up one with ILO advanced. The other one still has ILO standard on it. And on that page, on the license page, I actually show you that there's a whole bunch of features that you wouldn't have normally. So if you look at our servers, we're using a two HPE ProLiant DL325 Gen 10s. We have one of them set up as standard, the other as advanced. They're sitting right next to each other in the data center. We were provisioning these single AMD EPIC 7000 series nodes for a Ceph cluster that we're building. And we thought, hey, this is a great opportunity to go look at the differences that you see in the web interface between ILO Advanced and ILO Standard. Each of these HPE ProLiant DL325 Gen 10s has a HP ILO BMC on it. This uses ILO 5, just like the Intel Xeon server. So it should be pretty equivalent. Actually, HPE says the AMD EPIC servers with HP ILO 5 and some of their advanced security features are the most secure servers that they sell. So we have the two systems set up and on the left side we have the standard ILO standard on the right side we have ILO 5 advanced and we're going to just go through a couple screens and show you some of the differences so you can see on the overview they both look like they're ProLiant DL325 Gen 10s but when we kind of start clicking through stuff you're going to start noticing some things are the same because they're licensed across ILO features and other things are not the same for example sensors work you can see device inventories and we can see the fact that we have our 40 gig ethernet adapters in here a lot of the other great ILO tools like the firmware inventory to see what versions you have those are all the same so let's instead get to something where we start getting differences specifically with ILO Federation HP ILO 5 has the ability to manage groups of HP ProLiant servers, all in a single view from one management interface. And this is part of the value that the solution provides, which is really to be able to not just manage one system, but to manage multiple systems at one time without having to go to some other tools. Of course, HP has a slew of other tools and other third-party tools you can use, but at least this is an example. So you can see that in this little cluster, we have a number of different systems, including the DL325 Gen 10s, as well as other systems, both from AMD and Intel. Now, one of the first features that we see is different is when we get to the group firmware update and group virtual media. These are ILO advanced features that you can see on the right side of the screen are available but they are not available if you don't have the ILO Advanced and you're just on the ILO Standard. Likewise, on the group power settings, you can turn groups of machines on and off. You can set power limits so that way you don't go over the power that you have provisioned in a rack. You can also create groups with ILO 5, which allow you to set different sets of systems. So for example, we could have a group of just HPE DL325s, or we could have the entire Ceph cluster in one group. And now on to remote console media. Now in some circles, this is called the big show, or the feature that a lot of people want and a lot of people upgrade to ILO Advanced just to get. What the remote console allows you to do is to launch a HTML5 window that has the monitor output. You can also use keyboard and mouse commands in there. You can attach a virtual media drive. You can reboot the server. You can do all the things that you would do if you're physically standing at the server, plugging in a KVM cart. That's what you can do with KVM. The remote console on ILO Advanced and ILO Standard are a little bit different. On both, you can use the KVM feature to set BIOS settings, change your boot order, those types of things in the BIOS. But when it comes to finally having to boot an operating system, once the device successfully posts, then ILO standard cuts out while ILO advanced continues. That's a big deal because if you have an operating system or a hypervisor error and you need to get into that stage of the boot process, ILO advanced is the only way to go. As you would expect, you can power on and off the server, but you get advanced power metering settings and you also get the ability to set certain power limits in a rack with ILO advanced. So there are definitely some power features that are a little bit different in terms of what you can do with ILO advanced versus ILO standard. You still get some of the cool features like the temperature graph. Both versions have the ability to do things like see your ILO dedicated network port settings and also change it to a shared network port, use IPv4 and 6. But there are some big differences. Namely, if you go to the security settings and you start looking at what is different between the standard versus the advanced, you're gonna see when we get to things like certificate mappings, the Smart card authentication is something that ILO Advanced has no problem with, but on the other hand, ILO Standard doesn't have natively. You can see that directory services are enabled on ILO Advanced, but they're not enabled on ILO Standard. So if you wanna use an LDAP server for authentication or something like that, 
you can do that with ILO Advanced. There are other features that ILO 5 has that are really cool, like the ability to customize your login screen banner. So if you want to have a nice disclaimer for your legal department, you can do that. There are other features in ILO Advanced, such as the ability to have a key server set up for some of your arrays. But there's also this thing called firmware verification. And this is really important. This is what allows ILO 5 Advanced customers to validate that the firmware that's sitting on all the devices in their system are in fact valid and the hardware or firmware was not tampered with in transit or while the servers have been installed. While the HP servers can do remote support, there are a couple things that ILO Advanced gives you, which are things like the alert mail settings and also a remote syslog, which is something that's available in advance, but not in ILO standard. Hopefully this video gave you an overview of ILO 5 and advanced versus standard. Thanks for watching. You can check out more from our awesome STH team on the STH main site. We have other videos on YouTube and you can always subscribe to our channel and see whatever is coming out next.